Okay, let's get into it. Um, I've changed some of my audio settings. And great. Uh, it looks like it might be a bit too low. That's not what I want. Um, let me try just boosting it a little bit. Hello? Hello? There. All right. That should be better. Sorry about that. Um, so let's start by running some tests. Um, so we will do that. Open up our terminal. Um, we'll start Vim, of course. We'll start the test server. And we'll run, I think it's test bot, bot test. I was right the second time. Um, and that works fine. <clears throat> Everything that looks all good. So what are we doing? Do we have a to do file around here? Yes, we do. Uh, we need to log to a file um, and the standard output so we can read it. We also need to um, let's try moving auth code to logic.assembly. That will require storing the current state and then reading auth code from file. Uh, that seems fine. Yep. Um, let's remove that from the to-do list. We've already put that up there. Return null if send buffer is empty. What? Um, hey Kaz, what's up? <clears throat> We're just doing boring stuff today. Um, I would say this is pretty much a skippable episode. Um, but that's okay. Things take time. So let's go over to our logger. Um, so we have a log to file thing and we also have STD out. So I'm kind of tempted to just solve this problem by like writing um, like bot to um, test. Does that work? Touch test, um, access denied. So I do want to like write to an actual file in DOS, but I'm not sure this is the time um, because Okay, it's frozen, I think. I think that's frozen. Yeah. So we need to know how to redirect output in DOS. Um, we should be able to do that from C even. Um, actually, how is that done in No carnists, I have no idea if it means non-vegans or if it's some slang. So I don't quite understand what carnist means yet, despite being a vegan. Um, I know there's omnivores and I know there's carnivores, which exclusively eat meat, but I don't know what a carnist is. So I guess for a bit of a challenge, we could try and redirect output to a file, uh, but it's not very fun, is it? It's not very cash money. Um, I would instead like to just um, redirect output to a custom C stream. So I don't know if I've ever done that before. Um, so let's just search this up. C replace STD out. Can we do that? Free open, yeah. Um, free open and you can open it to a different path name. All right, that seems fine. Um, and hopefully that would catch all our errors. However, 
Um, I'm not sure if we can make a custom stream. I know you can do it in glibc. Um, I think. I don't know if you can do it in Whatcom. Um, F open cookie. So is this a real thing um, in DOS? Oops, I hit a, I hit a button. Um, open Whatcom F open. Probably not. But let's go ahead and skip through the manual real quick. Um, so it would be in the bot directory there. Docs, uh, what com? I think it would be Clib. Uh, let's search up F open cookie. Um, it does have free open, FS open, grow handles, HD open, OS handle. So there is some stuff we need to look into here. Um, this is library functions and macros. So it doesn't seem like it's, is this organized? Like, is this organized by category or alphabetically? Um, let's just do free open, let's look there. Uh, free open, let me find it. Oh, it's got an underscore S variant. We're safe. A stream is the name given to a file or device. Um, so can we make our own stream? Um, open a stream, probably not that. Um, F flush, F get pause. I don't see a free open there. Operating system IO functions. Um, oh, there's more. It just got, it's across a page. All right, that's right, this is a book. This is a book, it has, it has many things. Um, the multiple pages and you have to read through each page, okay. Free open, it reopens a stream. Um, set buffer, rewind. Wide character streams, all right. Process primitives, we don't need that. Um, operating system IO functions, okay. So we have file handles, which are close and create. No, that's, that's Unix stuff. We don't want to use Unix stuff. DOS specific functions. <coughs> um, don't see too much there. Um, we could just search for um, a certain signature. DOS long file name support. Uh, hmm. Will we need that if we're going to be setting a log file name? Let's just copy that and put that in our notes. DOS find first, header files. All right, so let's just scroll down to free open. So DOS create, creates a new file. Um, DOS open, FD open, FS open, grow handles dot, um, so grow handles looks kind of weird. HD open looks kind of weird. Um, let's search up grow handles. No, um, and what about HD open?
Oh, there's a cat on my... Hello, cat. Cat, it's... It's 6 a.m. There's nothing for you to even be in my room for. Um, did I trip? I thought it was HD open. Um, let's go back to the free open big cat stream. Oh, uh, it's underscore HD open. All right, let's look for that. Oh, that was it. Uh, so that creates a POSIX thing. So it looks like we don't have an option for writing to multiple things at once, um, which is a little bit sad. You know what, let's just go ahead and search for file, case sensitive. I think they might put a space. Um, file, oh, don't, okay. Yeah, jump between my microphone and headset cable. Um, that's fine. I'm not mad at that. Um, so it looks like we don't have any options for redirecting much output, but also it shouldn't matter. We can just write our own output. Um, can we have the cat cuddle DOS stream? I don't know. So you know what would be interesting? Let's just quickly drive C code bot, uh, bot.cpp. Let's just start replacing our printfs here with our log function and see what happens. So we should have an extern Um, extern C int, what was it called? Um, log out going. So let's call it log general or log error. Um, hmm, I don't know if the logging, we'll just go with log general. Uh, and we'll just, yeah, log general. Uh, and it will take a character stream and we will call it um, text. Oh, but this, we're using printf here. Hmm. Uh-oh. So we would have to pass the stuff to printf. Can we do that? Because um, if we look at this, if we look at printf, I mean, we could wrap it. Yeah, let's do that. So um, log general, uh, yeah, we'll have log general, but we will also have um, a printf like function. And we define those as using um, How do you do that? The syntax is a little opaque. Um, C varags. Cat cuddle dos stream, maybe. Um, a VA list argp. Yes, the channel is for mature audiences. Lewd DOS streams. All right, let's replace this printf with um, log printf. So uh, I guess we're just going to be log printf. We're gonna just mimic the interface of printf. Am I only using printf here or am I using f printf as well? I'm using f printf as well. Um, I don't know why. Interrupt far. That's fine. Do I not use signal? No, DOS doesn't have signals. Uh, 
Why are you bullying me? Um, <clears throat> let's touch up F printf. All right, so that should be fine. Uh, signals are just fancy interrupts. I, I know what they are. I just said that DOS doesn't have them. I all right, I'm getting distracted. Um, log, so let's replace printf um, with printf log. There we go. Yeah, what's up? Fancy interrupts. They are fancy. They're like interrupts, but they're in user space. Um, I honestly don't know. Um, also, not sure if I want to click that link. Um, it seems very close to seeming like something that would give my computer um, some sort of infection. Maybe not a virus, but like um, something mimetic um, CARA format. So let's just copy that. There's a genital, a genital. All right, so let's just try and wrap printf first. So we get all this junk. We get VA start and VA end. One genital. But isn't it always referred to as genital? Did you include STD arg? No, I did not. Thank you, Kodo. Um, so we have our arg p. And for now, we're just going to do nothing, load nothing. And we will see if the program crashes. Um, I'm sure it gets auto included. C is cool like that. Printf log has not been declared. That's because it should be, you know what? I like log printf better. It should be printf log. It should be log printf. There we go. Koto giving the good programming tips. Um, yeah, I'm sure today is gonna go smoothly. Uh, missing return value. Um, you know what? Return zero. Have you checked printf's return value recently? Might be important. So that printed nothing. That's good. So now we're going to do vf printf format argp. Um, sorry, vprintf, I think. Um, and we do bot test. That looks like it's broken my computer. Um, so obviously I'm not doing something correctly. Yeah, see it's now hanging there, but it was hanging before when it couldn't connect to our host. Um, connect to host. And then it returns one there. I have a feeling I should be cleaning up the socket here. Um, hmm. Actually, you know, what, let's just try clean up socket there. Um, and let's see if that fixes that issue. Why not? Hey, hey, all fixed. Um, so let's change this V print in to VSN printf. And we're going to put a buffer. Um, is that like a glibc thing? What is your favorite pony? Um, 
Oh, that's a close call. Um, definitely not the, the Nazi pony, pony that's going around. Not a fan of that one. It's a bad one. Um, so how big is that? Yeah, there's a, there's a uh, Nazi pony. I think it's like Aryan or something. Um, I don't want to get tossed, but we're just going to do a quick peek. Um, Aryan pony. Oh yeah, Aryan. Um, yeah. So, don't do that. Don't. If you see that pony, walk away. Because it's not a good one. Um, because it's like, neo-Nazis really want to create like cute figures. Like they make anime girls that are like Nazis and stuff. It's very strange, especially since ponies aren't human and neither are anime girls. And if they were, they'd be Japanese. It's all, it's all very confusing. I'm, I'm very glad that the neo-Nazis are taking a multicultural approach to their propaganda, but I think they're missing a bit of the point. Um, so VSN print F string size. So let's do um, Nazis like to steal liberal works because they can't make anything worthwhile. Yeah. The sad truth. Let's just put a static buffy here. It's not a global variable. It just persists. It's like a local variable you can mutate. Okay, I really don't want to do that. Um, car log buffer printf. You know what, 120, 256 is fine. Let's initialize it with zeros. Um, buffer size of log buffer printf. Should be like, um, should actually be, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, and then we're just going to try, this is why we must ensure that the monarchy never falls in Equestria because ponies like her will just get in power. I can understand that. Um, so let's do log buffer print F here. Um, and we're just going to write a quick to do um, log thing and then a quick to do not log thing <laughs> um oops do you want to log stuff to a file not really i mean yes yes i do I don't know why my reaction was that. Um, I'm getting a little bit of brain fog here. So we want to call log.nas and we want to check return of value. Um, buffer has not been declared. I spelled it wrong twice. What's a long line? Dunno. Okay. All right. So we have, uh, we have our printf. Um, we do want to quickly just chop the buffer down to like 10 and see what happens. Probably bad things, right? Um, Surprisingly, not, yeah, surprisingly not, because it is terminating it. Yeah, it is truncating it. Um, that's fine then, we don't need to worry too much about the return value, um, because we're not gonna do anything. So the next thing is that we're gonna call log.nas. Um, And 
And so our current stuff here is using printf. Um, actually, it's using yeah, asn printf over here. Um, so create timestamp. I would suggest f printing to std error. Then, if you want to write to a file, redirect std error to it by free open. But I wanted to write to both, you know? I wanted to write to. I guess I can. Anyway, so let's do log general. Um, we're going to take the length and the length turns nothing. Um, log general. Um, Uh, all this in the middle can disappear. Um, and this is going to be the, the meat of the operation. Um, but for now, let's just, again, push down that um, print format incoming. So print format general. Um, and so that will just be the time, I think, I think. So it'll be, um, it will be null terminated, right? So we don't even need the, the length. Um, SI is null terminated. So we're just passing SI. Um, and then we're pushing the create timestamp. Um, and then we're going to push the format. That should be backwards. It should be format. Um, push SI. Um, and then we call printf. Then we just un unroll the stack. All right. Let's see if that's fine. I didn't do an extern, did I? But that's okay. Um, log incoming inconsistently redefined. Oh dear. Judge this on stream. Negative points for having a dot lol. Oh, this is by the Justine person. Yeah, I don't like Justine. Um, that's my that's my judgment. So we're also going to do an extern. I think it's extern C. Um, avoid log general um, I guess it's just going to be a car um, and then we will just do um, poor Justine I don't know um, I don't have much sympathy for uh, for people that use pledge all right, so let's try calling log general with our log buffer printf. Undefined simple log general. That's right. Um, and then we can just also do our ASM run thing. Now I'll leave it down there. Um, so that should be global logger general. Um, but we will also do global logger general there for C. I think we can do that. It should be fine. All right, that looks perfect. Um, 
let's reconsider what the hell is going on. So SI is not going to be our thing. It's actually um, AX. Um, so we're actually going to have to uh, move uh, uh, add pledge support in your bot. No. Um, all right, so here we go. Here's where our problems begin. Um, log general uses SI equals line and returns nothing. And log general uses AX equals line. And so all we're going to do here is push AX. Um, no, sorry, push SI. Move SI AX. Um, then we're going to call log general. Then we're going to pop SI and return. That seems fine to me. Um, okay, closer. Um, so at the top we have something main assembly started, send new buffer packet. So it looks like the timestamp isn't getting added correctly. So we call create timestamp. Um, we do push AX. We already have SI, then we have the format, then we call printf. Um, so what's happening here? <laughs> N greater than smiley face, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so something is going a little bit wrong here. What we can do is we can just push SI twice and see if that prints it twice. It has the same result, which isn't what I would expect in any case, really. Um, let's try pushing AX twice. In fact, I feel like I'm being tricked because this obviously is not correct. Um, that, so that, that does get the timestamp. All right, I must be, okay. I must be forgetting how to use printf. Show me your C code. You've seen the C code. So we push print format general. Um, we push AX, we push AX again. Um, what if we just push AX? What if that's the key? I don't know, I'm, all right, that definitely does not help that much. Okay, let's be more reasonable. Um, so format incoming, AX, yeah, this should be fine. This should be fine. It should be fine. Why isn't it fine? Um, it's fine. It's not fine, but it's a little bit fine. Um, I showed you the C code. Look, it's fine. Does this not look fine to you? It was working before with printf. It's fine. It's fine. Why am I pushing log general? What do you mean pushing log general? What do you mean? I'm not pushing log general. I'm pushing print format general, which is just, um, S than S. Never mind, question mark. Um, okay, AX, X. All right, let's just push SI twice. Um, let's call print, uh, and then we push the format, and then we call printf. That should be fine.
That's not fine. Why isn't that fine? Um, okay, yeah, no, so, hmm. Hey Kaz, good BRB, have good BRB. All right, so let's just test, is the format actually working? Um, format work, Y slash N. Yeah, so it is getting the format. Then the first thing that we should get is, um, I guess, yeah, the data, which is, oh, oh shit. Um, I see, I think, I think that doesn't work with null termination. Um, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's fine, we're just gonna have to pass. Um, you just noticed it too? Yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, it's 100% fine. Um, we'll just do this. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's a hundred percent fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Um, and then we will call create timestamp. Um, luckily we do actually have the length. Um, so let's go back to bot.cp and we'll put ret. There we go. And that's right. We have to do int length. Perfect. Um, Not sure what's happening here, actually. This looks really bad. This looks really bad. Um, and I have a feeling it's because it's pushing the arguments right to left instead of left to right. Um, so let's switch that around. Um, okay. Yep. And then we've just managed to put the timestamp in the wrong place, I believe. Or no, we haven't actually. Um, it's fine, kind of. Why is there a space at the start? No, it must be swapped around. Um, there is a space. What do you think I'm doing? Do you think I'm a hack? Do you think I'm someone that doesn't know how to program? I've been programming for, oh, a, a, I've been programming. All right, so yeah, it's printing stuff backwards. Um, and that's fine. Sometimes that happens when you're um, a hack like me. Um, so we call create timestamp, then we push AX. So is printf left to right? Hang on a second. you trust me? Oh, that wasn't it, that wasn't it. Um, so we push the timestamp. We push the timestamp. Creates timestamp returns. What does create timestamp return? Clobber's ACD. What's ACD? It should be AX, CX, DX. Um, so we're just gonna have to Ah, uh, I see. Push AX. What do you mean club is it? Move SP. Oh, we call create timestamp. And 
it should be time buffer. And it puts the buffer in AX. All right. Um, so we're actually just going to stop it from clobbering stuff. Um, it says it, it doesn't clobber stuff. It lied. My code lied. There's no clobbering there. Uh, push AX, push CX, push time format. Uh, Hmm. Hmm. Um. Hmm. This is what do they. What do the kids call it? Sus. Is it sus? Um. This is sus. I think. So it's putting the timestamp after it, which. Is confusing if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but let's actually insert some more stuff here. I uh, will do one, two, three, and we'll do that. That way we can see like the actual process. One, two, three. One main assembly done, two is the timestamp, and three is the new line. So I also see that I think my log printf is also including the new line, um, which isn't extremely charismatic. Um, so we're just going to find all instances of that, and we're just going to delete it, uh, replace it. There we go. So that should be fine. All right. Um, so now we just have to figure out why it's backwards. Now, I don't know if you can read this, but to me, it doesn't look like it should be backwards. Um, but we just don't know, do we? Let me close my door, it's getting cold. Actually, hang on, I'll go turn up the heater. Be right back. Get this thing off me, I say in an interview. I need, I need the microphone like really close to my chest so you can hear my belly sounds because uh, my audience is spread thin and I really need to, I need to get what I can out of them even if they're into weird stuff. Do you understand? Um, all right, so let's look at this logically. We push CX and we push SI. Is that correct? See over here, when we do create timestamp, we push CS, what do I, rah, okay. Um, over here in incoming, we push um, the timestamp last and then CX and then CX. Um, and then SI. Oh, that's right, because there is. So it's pushed right to left, I think. No, it's pushing. Yeah, right to left. So it pushes the CI, CX, CX, AX. So are we doing that here? 
We should be pushing. Um, no, we're not. I think so. I think we're not. I mean, it would make sense. Um, yeah, that seems like it should work. Hmm. Unless these are backwards. There's a lot of right to left happening here. Um, I might have to break out the debugger in a sec. All right, never mind. Um, see arguments are left to right. We did it, kind of. Um, are you proud? I need someone to be proud. All right. Um, so we have our thing there. So now let's get um, log incoming to use log general. Um, so we're going to just, instead of doing this here, we're going to log incoming is just going to call um, move SI um, log incoming text. Oh, but then if I do it that way, I can't have a new line. Um, I have to buffer it. Hmm. I want to be able to send it with a new line. I guess, I guess I'm just going to have to go back and uh, put a new line on everything. Um, I don't know what I've just done. Probably something strange. All right. Already at oldest change. Already at oldest change. Nothing to undo. Um, that's fine. Um, oof. We're just going to have to quickly add back all the, all the things. Um, There, there, um, there, there, I think also over here. And here and probably here and here and here and here and here. Is that it? Log printf new line, new line, new line, new line, new line. All right, no, new line there. Um, new line, 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 new line. All right, break on me. I dare you. I double dog dare you. I will break my okay. Um, so it's still working. Um, it's exceptional. Uh, print format general. Um, yeah, so log general is using printf, but eventually we should um, just turn that into two prints. Um, okay, so log incoming, we want to turn this into two calls. So um, print format um, log incoming. So log incoming. Oh, so that's going to be a bit difficult because that does have um, the I that has um, an integer there. Um, so let's just try spicing things up a bit. Um, hmm. how am I going to do this? 
I could just turn that to SN printf. Um, <clears throat> but I don't have a buffer for it. And I'd be, I'd like to just be able to log just whatever. So, um, here's what we're going to do. Log general is now going to be called, um, log general is now going to be called log general. Um, next up, we're going to break that down a little bit. And we're going to have a log um, string function. And I guess a log character function. We're going to basically be breaking stuff up. Like, mm, should we buffer the logs? Masaki, what do I do? What do I do, Masaki? Um, I don't want to use printf over here. Um, so we have log general, um, ax equals line, ax equals length, All right? Log incoming. And then we have the legacy functions down here, which don't use, um, it's mainly just these two here at the moment, which don't use um, log general, um, but we don't have a buffer. I guess we could just create a nice big log buffer. Hmm, that takes up space. Oh, we also, we could push it to the packet handling code actually. Um, so that would be in state.nas. Would it be? No, that would be in Um, ah. drive C code bot, um, that would be in logic.nas. And this is where we call the log incoming and log outgoing. So should we have a buffer here? And then we write to the buffer. Um, this brings up like more questions because we're going to have to have some kind of buffer for, um, uh, well, in general, um, we're going to have to have, um, like in, we're going to have to be able to buffer in order to make, um, things that we're writing. So. This is kind of getting close to that. Um, I think for now, hmm. Let's just look at how we print. Let's look at um, DOS interrupt print. Um, and we're going to see print and there's writing to file. So writing string to STD out. What's this standard output? Um, we terminate it with a dollar sign. Um, and it writes it to output. Uh, 
Um, that's a bit tricky. Because we're all using length here. Um, we don't have space for a terminator. Um, and then we have DOS write file, probably. Open file, write file. And we have doubt it all right there. I guess we could like do console input output, direct console output character, um, write string to standard output. Uh, so we're going to have to, I guess just do buffering, right? <laughs> more buffering um we do buffering here but it's kind of not inverted ah hmm we have a line buffer here which is 512 so how is this going to work Um, we might as well just, uh, are we writing string handling functions? I'm asking myself, um, cause the answer seems to be yes. Um, the answer seems to be yes. I am writing string handling functions. Um, cause that's what seems to be happening. It seems that, um, we have our, um, log stuff here, um, which isn't going to really work unless we have a buffer and terminate it, which is tricky. Um, is there really no write string with length? Um, uh, I guess we could cheese it with Whatcom, but I'd really rather not. Um, uh, so write string to STD out. Write character to STD out. So it would seem like we do have to like buffer this. We can't just, we can't just specify a size for some reason. Um, AH2, AH equals six. Um, so that writes a single character direct console output and that writes another character, but I don't want to spam interrupts to write characters. Um, what about opening a file? Can we open the current console? That would seem weird. DOS write string with um, wait, someone has, there has to be another way because how else do you escape um, the dollar sign when writing? Um, I have a feeling I'm missing something here. Um, DOS escape dollar sign int DOS escape dollar sign. I don't think we're gonna find anything on stack overflow here. Um, so we might have to dig into DOS box real quick. Um, CD DOS box source vim dos dot cpp. 
um, I think it's dos.cpp. Um, and so we're looking for int uh, read character. So I think this is, yeah, 21 handler. Uh, write character, read character, write character to printer, direct stuff, write string to std out. So that's nine. Um, what the hell is happening down here? What is happening? What the heck is happening here? Why is this here? Oh. No, I'm not liking that. Um, so it seems that it just does DOS write file and STD out is a file. And, and it, and it just caps at 42 characters here. Why? Why does it do that? If mem read b buff equals t. I'm getting a lot more questions here than I thought I would. Um, DOS write to std out. Um, Is std out a file? Open file. You are confused. Um, you don't see issue here. You don't see confusion. Yeah, I'm doing the goods, I think. I'm trying to figure out like, um, can I write a length, a string to STD out with a length. And I'm thinking I must be able to, otherwise you couldn't write dollar signs. Um, so the DOS box code here isn't exactly that helpful, um, mainly because I don't want to use printf. I want to use the DOS, um, the native stuff, the interrupts. All right, so it, the, okay, if we go to the official DOS web page, um, which doesn't exist, but we have the second best, um, here's an abridged list. Um, you have write string to std out, and it takes a dollar terminated string. How, how's this possible? Um, let's see if we can find Ralph Brown's interrupt lift interrupt list. Um, oh, oh boy, this is, this is old. Um, all right. Friend finder. You want friends? Oh, I don't think it's that. All right. Um, <clears throat> Oh, screen readers, access software. Um, wow. <clears throat> this does seem to be pretty extensive. Let's have a quick, quick peek at this stuff real quick. Um, file manipulation. Um, we're looking for, I guess, serial IO, shell command interpreters, speech, um, runtime support other operating systems, um, console, output, I think that should cover it. Um, C switch, back and forth, double DOS. All right, desk view, debuggers. So these are just applications, file manipulation. Um, serial IO shells command. Um, you know, we might actually just want to look at the free DOS source code, which I definitely have downloaded. Okay. I don't, um, 
This interrupt list is too much. Um, I feel like I've... I feel like I'm getting the fire hose here. Um, so it would be 21. Um, uh, write character to STD out. So let's see. Um, what? Write string to standard output. Does it say anything here? Alright, so it has some cool DOS info there. Um, C A H equals six output category DOS kernel. This might be it. Um, direct console output. Get system date. Get system time. Write character to printer. Is there any file stuff here? Did, does DOS 2, the only one that has files? No, it has rename files. Um, so, I guess my question here is, is std out a special file? Hmm. DOS special files. Um, DOS system files. So like if we do echo hi to std out, is that just, okay, well that doesn't work. Um, I don't know why. Hmm. Get system date. Write character to printer. <clears throat> STD print, STD out. Um, all right, so the only way we're gonna figure this out is probably um, looking again at DOSBox and seeing how do we open files? What is std out here? Um, git grep std out. Um, what is it? Is it defined somewhere? Where, where are you? DOS open file con open std out. Is that what I want? Um, not understanding where std out comes from actually. Um, seems like it might be somewhere else. Include, all right, include DOS include.h. Um, std out file handling routines. Um, so are those numbers or, or what? Um, let's just see what happens. Like, can we find con? Is there like a special file here? Um, DOS open file con std in out box. We should be past a file descriptor, right? Right? DOS should have file descriptors. And this should be in the PSB. DOS default predefined file handles. Zero, one, two, three. All right. All right. Um. So we just have these file handles and we want to write to one. So we probably should try that then. So log general, 
we want to write to file. Also, this website looks super cool. Um, create file user handle, open file, write file or device using handle. So these are int 21 handle stuff. So um, write to file, int 2140 file handle and buffer. Let's try that. Um, so instead of calling printf, uh, print format general, um, uh, we still don't have any string buffering stuff, do we? Um, hmm. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the timestamp for now, and then we will um, just do the timestamp separately first. So let's just quickly test that printf works without the timestamp. That seemed fine. Yep, yep, yep. So what do we want to do? We have, um, that's right. Um, the timestamp thing here doesn't uh, return the length. What does SN printf return? It should return the length. Does it include the null terminator? It should. Excluding the null byte. Uh, but also SN printf is possibly larger. Um, fish sandwich with banana peppers, tomato spinach, you jealous? Yes, yes, I'm jealous, really jealous. Um, I guess it doesn't matter if there's a nail bite or not. We'll, we'll just figure that out. Um, so we want to, we would just assume that there's no, um, AX equals written, um, amount to write or AX equals written um, might be more than time buffer length. We'll assume it's not for now. Um, and so then what we will do is move, um, we will club a CX as well actually. Create timestamp. Um, AX, CX. I don't want to clobber AX and CX though, because um, I'm using them over here. Not very convenient, They're not very cash money. Um, I guess we'll just choose BX then. Why not? Or I suppose we could use DIDX. Um, DS, DX, DX, CX, all right. Um, we'll just return AX and CX. Um, so we return the time buffer. Uh, move AX, CX, and we move CX, AX here. Um, I don't know what that move was that I just wrote there. Okay, it was half written. And then we pop BP and DX. Uh, 
And so over here, this also means that create timestamp is going to, but that runs last, so that's fine. Um, we'll just have to push AX, push CX, um, pop AX, pop CX. Uh, we can actually just, no, I don't, I don't want to be tricky about it. So we call create timestamp and then we get it in AX and CX. Um, move DX AX. We're also clobbering um, DX over there. Um, let's put it around the right direction. Um, and then we want to call int 21 EH 40 BX. Um, I guess we're also going to clobber BX then. That's fine. Um, so we're going to push BX DX. Um, so I move DX AX. Um, we have CX, which is fine. Um, move AX 4000. I think it's that. Um, And then BX is the file handle, which is one. What am I doing? Push AX, push CX. Cause I'm clobbering those. And no, we don't need to preserve those. That's fine. Um, we do need to preserve CX. So we move AX to that, move BX1, um, move DX AX. We have CX still, um, 21H, and we pop CX and we continue. So should this work? Let me just check, is it one? I think it's one. Hands up if you think this is going to work. All right, let's try and do it. Oh, it does work. Two hands up, yeah. Although. Something is not right here. But I'm not sure where the issue is coming from. Let's quickly comment this out. All right, so somehow our spaghetti is getting in the buffer. Which isn't good, unless I actually wrote spa send new buffer. Um, did I write that? Yeah, so it says spa send new buffer there when we were sending a packet. And it has spa, which I assume is spaghetti. Um, I don't see that anywhere else though. So where is it? Why is it saying spa send new buffer? 
it says sent packet, so it should be here. Hmm. Receive new packet works fine. So we're having some spaghetti issues here. You know what we could do? We could just also do a regular printf. Um, so printf um, s n um, log buffer print. Um, so we are having what I would call what many programmers would call a uh, spaghetti incident. Um, our spaghetti has escaped. Um, and it's gonna take us a little bit to figure out why this is. Um, <clears throat> um, if we look here, Um, excuse me, big buff. Let's do that again. It looks like it's being, I like spaghetti a lot. It's one of my favorite meals. Um, what is happening here? Is this our logging code? If we disable log general, is this going to improve the situation? Or it's not going to improve the situation. Um, that's not good. Now, as you can see here, it actually looks like the spa is a remainder from the buffer here. Outgoing 22 pong hello world Spa. So it looks like we're not actually terminating the outgoing buffer correctly. Um, which isn't great. So let's put our logging code back, which seems to be fine. Um, it's only applying to outgoing stuff. So it looks like hello world, we then do a uh, processing this. Why is there, why is the, huh? Um, it, so, okay. So it shouldn't be working like this unless, um, I need to call it F flush. I think, hang on a second. Um, I'm sharing the console and I'm not calling, um, F flush. Um, so let's flush out input. Um, then F flush stream. Um, so we're going to move X zero. And we're just going to flush the stream. So we don't get weird stuff like this happening too much. Um, let's see, does this help make it less weird? It should look more broken now. Yes. Okay. So now we can see the issue here. Um, I don't know why I chose not to flush it. It probably just slipped my mind, but it looks like outgoing um is not terminating the thing correctly um that's not good right um but is outgoing it doesn't have a new line at the end should we be adding a new line i don't think so print format outgoing, but could it be that our logic is not null terminating? Um, so when we call log outgoing, we have our buffer and we have the length. Uh, we call log incoming. 
uh, then we do, do something, I suppose. Then we do log outgoing. Um, so if it's not ping or if it is ping, then we just um, edit the thing. Um, but that's unusual because the buffer there, I've only edited one byte and it now says spa. Um, let's try log in coming here and see if that helps. It does not. So what is happening here? Um, is it possibly this or is it log incoming mutating the data somehow? So let's try it log out going here. You will go to sleep. Thanks for dropping a buy at Masaki. Remember, don't say don't say swears. All right, so we call logout going, let's just call it twice. I don't know what's happening there. That's too confusing. That's hurt my brain. So we call login coming, then we call it again. And this should be fine. Unless it's clobbering my registers which I think could be what's happening because we did change the timestamp code, didn't we? Um, so now we do need to preserve CX. So let's go back and look at our log, the log outgoing. Um, we do push CX here, but then create timestamp um, clobbers CX. So let's try and pop CX there and do the same thing over here. Um, after the base pointer, ideally, what if I said P star star, wh what? It seems like something that would be on a TV show. All right. All right, so let's go back to our um, logic and just remove that double call incoming. Something I'm noticing here is that the time isn't updating um, to make the hundreds look like it's worth what it should be. Um, so we might just want to drop that for now. Um, let's go to our log and we shall drop the hundreds. Um, which would be that, I believe, unless it's the other way around. In that case, this is going to look very strange. Yeah. Um, so it's over here. Uh, push AX. Um, move ALDH. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to do that. We can just do move DL to DH. What have I written here? Uh, move DL to AL. Um, Okay, so I actually read something that moving something to the low register clears it. Um, but I'm not sure how true that is. So what I want to do here is while I'm at it, um, let's just say we move AX zero times one, two, three, four. Then we move AL um, five, six. Will that clear the rest of it? It shouldn't. I think it's only a H that clears it. Um, T4615. Um, so the first thing should be, um, not entirely sure what's happening here. 
four six four six okay so right all oh, right that's probably a decimal thing but what if we move a h to with just um 56 will that zero out i think the things no all right i'm just checking you don't want to just trust things you see on the internet because those are bad okay so we have a bit more of a sensible logging I'm going to do a bit of a stretch for my legs. And so I'm trying to avoid writing string stuff because eventually we do want to have some kind of string library that will allow us to write a number. I just did drink. We want a string library that lets us write characters, write strings and write numbers. Um, because I believe we're going to use that for the DOS spot and we will need to buffer. Right, I'll drink times two. If I had a Twitch bot, it would be yelling at you. Um, but I don't. So we have here and we do have it writing to um, the correct output. So what we're actually going to do now is remove the flush. Um, that's fine. Why am I moving AX? Okay, yeah. Um, that flushes it with null. Uh, so now our log incoming, we want to turn this into... Um, we're just going to have to bite the bullet and have a buffer. Uh, packet buffer, packet buffer length. Actually, we should also, um, we're going to set this to 10 here and watch the chaos unfold as we try and write past memory that we didn't, that we weren't able to actually um, do properly. Um, actually, what? What's happened there? Um, SN printf should be the amount to write, correct? Or are we in open Whatcom land where that is incorrect? or a negative character value with more than count characters. So, all right, so it returns the value written or a negative value? Hmm. And it only sometimes puts a null. I don't know about this. Uh, Wait, these are the underscore versions. Um, why is there an underscore version? All right, so this, the underscore SN print F and the Regular print F have different semantics. Uh, okay, hang on. All right. All right, all right. So we want to know, will it write a null byte unconditionally? A null byte, including a null byte. However, SN print F over here, um, okay, so that is 
So SN printf is not the same as regular printf. Uh, S uh, what? Um, that's not good. Um, SN printf versus SN printf. Oh, I don't know about this. S printf is part of the standard library while SN printf is not. Oh dear. Um, but this is fine. That's not fine though. Oh no. Wait, it is fine. I thought it was a bug, but it was my doing. The, the truncating of the, of the stuff. Okay. Um, SN printf is equivalent to the F printf function. So let's just find regular SN printf. And I guess we will also look at the SN printf safe. Um, so let's look for SN printf s. What's this do? So this will, um, throw an error. if there's too many. All right, um, that's fine. I'm not gonna do that. We're just gonna truncate it. Um, it's okay to truncate things. Why is there a VSN printf? Um, SN printf, please. I don't want that. Am I going around in circles? No, I'm not. I don't think so. All right. Returns the number of characters that would have been written. Well, that would have been written had count been sufficiently large. Not counting the terminating null. All right, so we have to add one to that. Um, or a negative value if an encoding error occurred? What's an encoding error? Encoding error? So it... It's possibly negative. SN printf negative return. How to make SN printf fail due to encoding error. The underlying multi-byte RT, multi, multi, MBR to white character, multi-byte R to character. Therefore to trigger an encoding error. All right, so print F, if we use LC or LS, then that will become, that will be the problem. I think if we try and put wide characters and then, all right, so this is fine. So let's think about the return values of SN printf. Um, So what does it return? Number of characters that would have been written, not counting the null terminator. All right, in other words, it's written successfully if the return value is non-negative and less than count. Um, success if between um, zero and time buffer length. Um, so what do we do if we don't have success? 
Um, I guess. Oh, that's that's a hard one. It will try and write. Um, does it null terminate if it's truncated? A null character is placed at the end. Um, but also we don't use null terminators. So I guess the answer is that, is this including a null terminator? Um, now all that makes sense, which also kind of brings up the question um, why, why, why do we not have a buffer overflow here if it would tell us the amount that it would want to write? It clearly wants to write more, but it is not. What if we move CX and just put 32 there? Will it try and write that? Or is it some kind of protection from being null terminated? Um, hang on, it looks like it's getting back into the spaghetti. Um, and the spaghetti buffer and, not the spaghetti buffer. Um, what's happening here? So move CX32. That says the length is 32. The timestamp length is 32. And so it prints the timestamp. But also that somehow affects other things. I don't see why. Hmm. hmm. Oh, because um, when we put the timestamp here, we're outgoing and incoming. Um, it's null terminated. Well, when we log something generally, it is not null terminated. So let's just try doing. Let's try fixing that. This should look garbage then. Um, it still doesn't look too garbage, even though it should be garbage. Um, it should very much be garbage. It should be writing garbage everywhere. Um, perhaps I have, I do not have that around the wrong way. Um, what if I just hard code like five there? Um, what's happening here? The incoming and outgoing One is doing only five and one is doing not five. I know cat, it's fine. Log incoming, log outgoing. You okay cat? I think she's snoring. Um, so something is wrong here because Hmm. Let me try and pass this. So we have incoming, 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 outgoing, Pong, hello world. 
Okay, so that must be it there. So, why is that going past? Oh, right, because it is actually, that's a general thing and it's trusting that. So if we actually do move um, CX5 there, and then we push CX, and then we push CX again, it should be fine, right? Yeah. So that pushes five and it, it writes five. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do is move AX and then we will put the length to five and see what happens. Could be cool, huh? Okay, so... Not entirely sure what's happening here. Oh, so this is the buffer here. The 2022 buffer, 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 buffer. Um, not sure why this isn't going over for incoming and outgoing. It should be. Push AX plus CX, push AX plus CX. Move CX, AX. So this is returning the correct value but here it is not. Is that because it's accidentally null terminated? Um, why is incoming and outgoing? What is happening there? Is it, I think it might be null terminating it. So if there's not enough buffer, we push six. We say the size is six. One, two, three, four, five. So it is writing a, um, it is writing the correct, it writes a null termination even when it's truncated. And then if we push um, time buffer length, I would assume that it also writes that. So that does 10 there. Um, and then it, the AX returns the value that um, it should. So what we need to do is limit that. We need to clamp it. Um, so what we were going to do there is, um, so this unconditionally includes the null terminator. So what we might wanna do there um, let's sub one from CX to ignore the null terminator because I don't want to write null terminators everywhere. Um, sub CX one. That kind of looks chaotic to me. Um, I think skip null terminator. It's hard to tell if there's a null terminator in there somewhere, um, but um, don't include null terminator. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare We're going to compare AX with time buffer length. And if it's, then we will move CX, sorry. We'll move CX AX. We'll compare CX with time buffer length. And we will jump if it's, we'll jump if 
CX is greater than, uh, less than, or equal. I think, no. Yeah? The documentation says it should be between, okay. So jump less than, um, uh, no clamp, and then we'll just put no clamp, and then we will just move CX with the time buffer length, and then I think we will sub one. And we also have to do a test zero. One twenty nine instruction inspected. Um, what jump less than? I think that's it. Um, okay, so that seems to work. So we've set the buffer size, let's set that to five. So we should get four because we're skipping the null byte. All right, um, and move CX. If we change that to two, is that going to skip the null byte? And if we just do zero there, is it going to pad it? Yeah, all right, so that's correct. Um, move CX AX. So we're going to compare it then to um, so no clamp, but I also have to think about the case of um, it's truncated. Um, if it is the length, does that mean it's truncated? Yes, yes, that does mean it's truncated because um, the length that it wants to write is plus one. So, um, no truncate. Um, and then we want to also have a mode if it's negative one. So let's just test that here by moving AX negative one. Um, and this should be fine. Just see how this blows up. Could be cool. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that wasn't cool. That wasn't cool. Why is this unmuted? Oh, that was so loud. Not a fan of that. Not a fan at all of surprise. I was just about to drink my... <sighs> Why? <clears throat> um, so... Does x86 have a compare with zero? Um... <laughs> getting jump scared by cursed dust. So if it, we jump less than zero, um, that would be an x86 thing, right? x86 jump less than zero. I don't jump if below zero. Jump if zero. No, you don't understand. I want to check if it's below zero. All right, I guess we'll waste the register. Now I see why risk architecture is just hard code a register to zero. It makes so much sense now. All right, so um, move CX zero, um, jump less than, so if um, compare, AX zero. 
let's just turn this around. Uh, move CX AX, move AX zero, compare AX CX. Um, can we put two jumps in a row? So like if it's, if we jump less than zero, then we will jump to um, invalid. Um, in invalid, right? And then if we jump, oh, we'd have to do another compare. And then we would do another compare. Um, compare CX time buffer length. Um, if it jumps left than that, then we'll go to no truncate. Otherwise we just move the buffer length. Um, Actually, we should put jump greater than. So if it's greater than zero, then um, success, and then we'll put success here. Otherwise we will just um, move AX zero, move CX zero, Huh. I mean, I guess we could just return zero, right? We'll just clamp it. That should be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so if it's less than zero, then we will, um, so if it's less than zero, so if it's greater than zero, we'll jump to not zero. Otherwise we will move um, AX zero and then we will jump to not truncate. Otherwise we will compare it and then we will optionally truncate it. This code seems a little bit complicated, especially since I have two move CX AX things there. So let's see, we move the count, we move AX to CX and then we check if it's a zero. If it is, then we set CX to zero. Um, oh, that will include the null terminator. So then we'll sub it and we'll get zero. All right. Um, but if it's not zero, then we will check um, if it's greater than that, if it is, we'll try and cut it there. All right, so let's try that. So let's move. AX negative five. Um, did right. Uh, I feel like this has to be factored out here, this SN printf thing. So we'll probably do that in a bit. Um, but let's do that. Is it going to crash? Not truncate? No truncate. All right, that did not did not save the day. So we compare CX with AX. No, we didn't compare it. What's wrong with us? Compare CX zero. Um, there. We didn't compare. All right. So that returns zero. Um, what about if we write nothing? 
And then we'll do zero. That should just have the same thing. Um, and then we will test our small buffer and then our large buffer. Um, and the time buffer is going to be 32 again. All right. Wait, is that not it? Is that, is that too, is that too small? Or did I not powder it properly? What's happening here? This isn't good. Something's wrong. All right, so uh, I guess it returns the number. Okay, let's just do that. So I guess it returns the amount written, amount written minus the null terminator. All right. All right, that makes sense. Let's put that back to how long, how many characters is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Put that down to 20, I guess. There. Ah. <sighs> All right, so now let's go to log general. All right, let's go log incoming. We create the timestamp. Print format incoming. So now we're going to have to do an SN print F thing here. All right. Um, actually, let's just add some internal stuff. So um uh write std out and let's just put that there uh write std out will um write ax Where's the length? Where's the length? All right, now hang on a second. Um, AX equals line, CX equals length. So let's go up here. All create timestamp, call, um, write STD out. And then we will call F flush while we're at it. Because why not? Now, can we do that with the log incoming and outgoing thing? All right, that just gives us smiley faces. Um, not, not too helpful, to be honest. Um, what if we don't flush it? I mean, it has the correct thing. Um, create timestamp should return AX CX. So we moved DX to AX. We've already moved, we've already clobbered. Yeah, we have to put the flush before um, that. No, before the timestamp, even before that. All right. So now let's do this. We'll just paste that in there. Why not? Who cares? 
Then remove the timestamp from that. Uh oh. That doesn't seem to be working. Incoming works, we don't see any outgoing. Because now we push CX there, we flush it, we create the timestamp, then we write it. Then for the format, we push CX, SI, CX, and CX. That should be fine. That should be fine. Why is that not fine? Um, I'm guessing something's gone wrong here. Something's gone terribly wrong. What's the test server say? Testing ping one. So incoming is not working. Log incoming is not printing the format incoming. Why? What if we remove that stuff? Yeah, sometimes after you sneeze, you get sleepy. All right, so something's happening there where push CX, move AX, op CX is not working. Um, let's try removing the flush. What does write std out use? AX and CX. And that returns something in AX CX. Hmm. Push CX, create timestamp, write std out. What if we don't write STD out? What if we're pathetic and a loser? But it works. Okay. All right. Write STD out. Oh, that doesn't preserve any registers, does it? All right. Um, push AX, DX, BX, pop. DX, BX, AX. This should be fine. This should be A-OK. -okay. All right, that fixes it. So now the timestamp handling and stuff is interspersed. And it looks fine. Does that look fine? That looks fine to me. Um, now print format general. Let's print format general. That's just a space and the text. So what if we just um, do write um, STD out here. So like um, move AX SI. Then we call write STD out. So this should have no space in it. 
Um, okay. That's kind of interesting. Receive new packet length 18. And packet. So there's no new line at the end. I didn't know there was a new line. Unless CX needs to be incremented by one. Do we need to do that? Add CX. I don't want this to be the solution because then we're just in a nightmare world where nothing makes sense. All right, that's not the solution. We push CX, we pop CX. Um, we have AX and SI. Um, SI is the line, CX is the length. What if we add, I don't know, five? No, something's wrong there. Writing STD out is not writing the new line. Which makes me think um, if we go to bot.cp, what if we replace all the new lines with a carriage return? I don't want this to be the solution, um, but let's see. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think we need to be R and N. Wow. Um, that's insane, but okay. All right. And then we just need to put a space in between. Um, now, can we write a single thing? Can we write a single um, letter to a file? Write to file. Create file using handle. Um, write file or device using handle. I guess we can only uh, point to a write buffer. So I guess we need to write a space. Um, so let's do call that. Um, call write space. And then we'll also put that over here. Um, which is kind of, I know it's mixing up the string stuff. Like we have write STD out and we have um, write space. Uh, actually, let's just call that print space. Um, and then we will remove the space here. Um, and then uh, print space. So print space takes nothing and all it will do is um, and we will push the space onto the stack. So that's hex 20, I believe. Um, we will move DX with the stack pointer. Um, and then we will move BX with one. No, CX with one. And then we will just write it. Um, DX CX. 
So we're clobbering DX, CX, and BX, and AX. AX, BX, CX, DEX, DX, CX, BX, AX. This is not optimized. This is not optimal code. Um, we might as well just be passing shit on the stack at this point. Um, which I guess is why Linux does it. Oh dear. Um, that just hung. Um, what if I negative one from the stack pointer? No, that should still only write one byte, right? Something else must be going on. AX, BX, CX, DX. DX, CX, BX, AX. Um, I'll try negating it, but this should be fine. Yeah, so that's hanging. Um, Maybe we should try and set that to 10 and then we can just uh, blast our stack all over the screen. All right, so it actually is printing. I didn't notice, but it looks like it is actually working. Um, hmm. So what's happening? Print space there. Um, oh, pop CX is just there. Um, we do need to push CX here. Wait, no. Push CX, move AX, pop CX. Push CX, move AX. Um, call flush and then pop CX. Did I somehow mess that up? Hang on a second. Um, that's not appropriate there actually. Um, yeah, move CX1. So are we not returning here? Print space, what if we do print space twice? And by... Is this logging? No, this is just general logging. Um, so we call right std out, then we call print space. What if we call write std out twice? And then print space. I have a feeling, I have a feeling this is my fault somehow. I'm not entirely sure. Um, well, it is my fault because I'm the one writing the code, but all right, so we can write std out twice. What if we write sta out, then we print space, then we write it again? All right, so print space must be freezing the program. So I'm gonna go look over here and we're gonna have a quick think about this. We push ax, bx, cx, dx and then 20 and then we don't pop 20 um don't do that don't just use your stack space um <laughs> and not unwind it there we go Kind of. Does logout going do print space too? Yeah. Hey, that looks all good. Um, I just want to reflect here because I'm using a lot of stack. 
I need the stack for SN printf there. That's not negotiable. Um, right, STD out. Yeah, so print space and print um, right STD out is a little bit weird. Um, log general does some marshalling there. Um, we could combine that. We need to look at how we're using the registers a bit more. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. Um, so what's next? We're gonna try and get SN printf. Um, print format general, are we still using that? No, we're not using print format general. Um, that's good. We've got log general and that doesn't use printf. So, we're gonna have to clean up this SN printf thing. Um, so before that, we're just going to copy this. Um, we're gonna make a wrapper for SN printf and call it SN printf safe. SN printf trunk. Um, Arguments on stack. Uh, what arguments are we giving it? I don't know why it, it wants the arguments on stack actually. Um, what the fuck? Oh, it's because it's a printf thing. Um, so arguments on stack. Um, arguments on stack according to SN printf. We could probably wrap. Um, the printf2 this way. So when we call this, we're just gonna jump this down here. Um, so the buffer length will be stack plus two, I think. Um, safe sn printf trunk. Um, and then, yeah, that'll put, um, AX will give, you know what, let's just give this, um, a nice interface. Um, and so what this will do is return, returns AX equals, um, buffer, CX equals safe count. And then we'll just do SF in printf. Nice. So we call SN in printf. Uh, move CX AX zero. AX zero, did write, no trunk. If we did write it, we need to uh, move AX time buffer length. And we'll fix that up in a minute, but let's just do that and move AX time buffer and then we return. So let's just make sure that this, um, oh, this is not gonna work. Um, because we're putting the return value in the stack there. Uh, we're gonna have to borrow a register. Um, this is kind of nasty. Um, SN printf, so let's just, SN printf is not going to use any of our registers. So what we will do is do um, pop AX um, and then push AX. 
Oh, this is awful. But it feels so good. Let's see how good it feels when it crashes. Hey, we got a stack overflow. Um, nice. So what happens here? We call SNPrintf nice. SN printf knife. Okay, hang on a second. Let's just um, jump DX. Um, move DX um, after, and we'll just put after there. And we'll just do jump for now. We won't worry about making it a nice thing. We'll just do this. All right, stack overflow ruins DOS, ruined, um, at least in DOSBox. Can you get registers from Walmart? Probably, yeah. Um, holy shit, that kind of actually works, but let's just test it. Um, set that to just two. Right, so we're gonna try and make this a call and a call actually just puts the return thing on the stack. So it would make sense if we can just um, pop a node DX. Um, oh, SNPrintf is putting the result in AX. Oh, I'm a fool. Of course I picked the, the, the first register that that's gonna be used. Oh, that doesn't help. Pop DX, push AX. Oh, what is wrong with me today? Um, yeah, I clicked to open Firefox, thanks. That's what I wanted. I already have Firefox open. All right, so we have a nice SN printf. So that means we can call, um, Print format outgoing. We can call pris, um, SN printf nice, and we can call um, write std out. And I'm so confident about this, I'm just going to put it in both places. Then we're going to compile it. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, top quality. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Incoming, it's just printing the data over everything. So that's probably not great. Um, so we call SN printf nice. Um, that's not good. Um, that's probably because SN printf uses a buffer. Um, but we're not doing that, are we? We're not putting a buffer there. So um, I'm just going to put log buffer length and log buffer there. No, not in log general. Um, and then we'll just make a log buffer. And this is going to take up like way too much memory, but we don't have time. We just don't have time to, 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 to do this, you know? Okay. Um, that didn't help. Time buffer length, log buffer length, uh, log buffer length. Hey, thanks for the follow, Russ Jr. or eight. I hope you're not a spam account. Um, and if you are, just whatever. Uh, if you accidentally clicked follow, um, that's fine too. You can just click unfollow. Um, don't gamble. <laughs> uh, all right, so SN printf nice. We put time buffer, time buffer length, log buffer, log buffer length. 
and then it writes to std out. So how do I actually create timestamp? Then we do write std out straight after. Like gamble your life away for how much? All right. So I changed the log buffer and it is just printing the time a lot. Um, there's a lot of time stuff there. And then it actually, no, it just prints the time. Um, not great, not ideal. So let's see, time format, time buffer length, time buffer. Print format outgoing, print length buffer. Log buffer. Oh, I know why, because I dummied this out. So we have the length and the time buffer here. So these are actually already on the stack. Um, so we're going to do stack pointer minus two. Um, sorry, minus three, and this should be stack pointer minus two. Um, I don't know if that's the correct syntax. Invalid register set size. Hang on, let's set this to... Um, word. I don't remember how to move stuff from the stack. I learned it in one video. Um, oh shit, I'm supposed to like literally read it that way. We can remove the word there, I think. I think it's, I think it's implicit. Invalid effective address. All right, here we go. Here's where it happens. Um, we need to remember that we can't address using that. So move BX SP and then we'll just do BX minus three. And then that BX minus two, uh, pop DX, push DX. Um, we clobber registers here, we actually clobber quite a few. Um, let's just, Clobber. Uh, I guess DX. Um, okay, hang on. This is going to be annoying. Um, push BX. Pop BX. This should be fine. Narrator, it was not fine. So what happened there? I push BX, I put, I move the stack pointer to BX. Um, I pop BX, I try to move AX with the contents of BX minus three, but it should be BX plus three and plus two, I believe. I do not know if that's correct. It is probably not correct actually. Um, move, if we're not gonna truncate it, Move AX, all right, so let's just try, this is probably an off by one error actually. So BX plus zero, BX plus one. Oh, but then, all right. This is why you would use a base pointer, I guess. Nope. So if we did write, Push DX, push BX. 
of bx. And then dx is the rat. Um, let me check my email real quick. That's fine. So we push dx, which is the return value. We push bx. Um, so we can use it. We check if we've written stuff. Um, if we didn't, right, that's my that's my issue there. I was not setting the um, value correctly, I believe. And then bx plus one. The bx is the stack pointer. So zero would be bx. One would be dx. Two would be the buffer. And three would be um, three would be the length, I believe. All right, we're getting closer, I think. Um, so. Um, so let's try pop dx, push dx, um, move. Let's put the stack pointer in BP, all right? Pop BP. Actually, if we're not pushing anything, we don't need to really touch that. We don't need to mess with the stack pointer. Okay, so we move BP to SP. So BP. Skip the return address. Um, so then we have the buffer, which is two, uh, one, two. I think that should be fine. Um, buffer and I'll just put length there. SN printf length, SN printf buffer. I don't know why I, why I wrote W make there. Um, so this is still not working. Call SN printf, push DX, move the, I'm not pushing the base pointers, push BP. All right, that's my issue there. I'm a fool. All right. So let's inspect this clearly. The length looks correct, but we're not moving the buffer. Um, let's try plus two there. I don't know why I keep doing the wrong thing there. Um, that's not exactly correct. That's because I'm doing BX plus, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I a fool? That's better. Um, that's a better effort. I think. Um, so the, if we did write, no, that's if it overflows, right? It only sets that if it overflows. So 
So let's just try bumping up because I might just be off. No, let's try going up some more. Wait, is this addressed in bytes? Oh no. So that should be, that should be two and that should be four. I shouldn't be running W make. All right, looking good, perfect. Um, let's just go up four and six. Oh. Closer. The date is working. Incoming is working. But the incoming buffer is small. And it's also not writing a terminating new line. Um, so we're gonna print the new line. Okay. IRC uses the same new lines, so we're actually good there. Um, are we flushing? Um, we can actually remove the flushing now because we're not actually using printf. But we're still um, having length issues. Um, why is that? All oh, right, this must be plus four and plus six because there's an extra, um, the return value is on the stack. Right, 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 right. No, it's not. No, the return value is in AX. You may have CX, AX, if it's CX zero, otherwise we jump and return the buffer. So we're always returning the buffer. The buffer is fine. Um, then we're returning the length if it's truncated. The truncating seems to be going okay. But we're hitting the exact same issue as before. Outgoing is even saying 31 or so. I think it's because we're clobbering um, some registers. We're clobbering CX, I think. No, we're clobbering DX? No, we're not. Yeah. Oh crap, we are. All right. Um, oh dear. How do we get out of this one? Um, where are we gonna put Oh dear. It's all right, Big Daddy. Um, we don't have a free register because by definition, any register we use is going to be um, gobbled up. Ah, uh, that sucks. Um, let's think. Hmm. But we're already using BP, so let's try that. 
No, because then that would, um, that would clobber that too. So I guess this is why we need callie save registers. Um, Oh, we can use CX, I think. Right. Can we use CX? Because we're going to be clobbering that anyway. It, look, it appears that worked okay. Let's also remove this base pointer stuff. Um, oh, we need that for addressing. Um, hmm. So it says incoming 34, incoming 30, 18, outgoing 31. So we're returning a value that's bigger than it should be. Where would it get 31 from? Um, Are we really clobbering CX? We are, we're clobbering CX. And then we were expected to return CX. Let's do push CX. Pop CX. Walmart, yes, there's a lot of registers going around here. Um, How about this? Move um, AX CX. Then when we're done, we move um, CX X. Oh, that clobbers that as well. Oh dear. Um, let's try using BX then. Or we could put it on the stack. Um, Fuck it, why not? Push CX. Pop CX. Who gives a shit? No one cares. Facts don't care about your feelings. Although we do push and pop CX there for no reason. Um, I don't know. Render stream on phone, pop out chat on Raspberry Pi. Render stream on phone. Great, now it's now the things that's outgoing is pack it too big. Oh, did we find a bug? Has it frozen now? Um, pack it too big. So, watch stream on phone, pop out chat on Raspberry Pi, yay. Um, so what the, what am I doing here? Yes. Um, oh God, I was gonna joke about your intelligence, Kaz. You're always going on about how much your brain sucks and you've got low, low intelligence. And I was just thinking, would Kaz's brain have a Z80 or an 8086? Old tabs from that other feature. Doesn't it have like tab hibernation? Push CX, pop CX. Push CX, pop CX. Push CX, pop CX. You okay, Kaz? I'm destroying the CX, I think. Um, yeah, Kaz is like a really huge brain. Um, Kaz has to live in, in America, believe it or not. Um, 
that's something I couldn't do. I'd be like, oh, I'm in America now. Um, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> the end. Oh God, okay, I've, I've, I've messed this all up. I've ruined it all. All right, what am I doing here? I'm trying to handle CX. All right, so. What? SN printf returns the CX that was written. Song America by Ramstein. Was it Ramstein? That's fine. So log incoming is destroying my life. So the reason is that um, SN printf nice. If I just comment that out, then that, that should be fine. Shumlet ring. America is the best. I want to move to America and be friends with everyone in America. Is that okay? Nine. I'm still annoyed about like, I don't know, I'm sus about the clock in DOS here because like, what's happening here? Something's happening wrong. Um, DOS. Synchronize host and time. Is that a checkbox? Okay, let's see now. Does this work? That's definitely not okay. Look at that jump. 94 seconds. 94 seconds? I don't have 94 seconds. Hold on. It must be DH. I don't have 94 seconds. What are you talking about? There we go. There, that makes sense. There, we fixed it. <laughs> we fixed the clock. Um, so, Schmeitlering is butterfly. Listening to my soothing accent of Australia frustration seems to set my programming frustration to null. It's fine. I wish I was writing ARM. I, it, every day makes me like, you programmed a bit of ARM CAFO. Did you know that in a, a, like 16 bit 8086, you can't address memory with any register. You can only use BX um, or DX or BP or something. Let me get the chart. I'll show you the chart. I'll show you where the chart hurt me. Is it already open to the page? No, bookmarks page 35. Yeah, so this is, this is the, this is the addressing system for the 8086. Um, no, no, it has to be in the following registers, BX, BP, SI or DI, or you can combine them as an, offset and then you can add a displacement and then you can set which um code segment it's in does that seem fine that seems fine to me right um and then it goes on about how you know this is this is <laughs> this is perfect look you can use these registers and stuff to you can use these registers and stuff in order to address uh, different parts of a struct. You know, isn't that cool? This is truly a high level assembly language. Um, you know, you can, you can go through indexes and use displacements and base registers. It's amazing. Technology. Um, but no, so this is the pain. Um, 
the something you'll notice isn't here is that you can't address using the stack pointer. <laughs> you can only address using the base pointer. Uh, it's fine. It's a hundred percent fine. This architecture is fine. Um, You broke Emacs in the first day. That's fine too. Um, all right, so. Wrong type argument, whole num p, negative four in the mini buffer. Right, 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 right. What the fuck does that mean? What's happened there? Maybe you should just like set Vim, but with the easy mode, like um, accessories. Is it in here? Programming. Oh, camel. No. Um, GVim. I don't have GVim. I don't know. Let's look at the editors real quick. I'm gonna go a bit over time because I'm pretty sure it's gonna take like another hour to figure out what I'm doing at the moment. Um, we're gonna go for an extra hour today, I suppose. Um, let's search up text editor. I got it with a mark delete. See, oh shit. There's also nano. Nano is pretty good. Um, nano is pretty good. Does it support the mouse? Hang on. No, it doesn't support the mouse. Um, rather use Genie. There's Textosaurus. There's Howl. There's Text Edit. There's Jup Programmers Editor. The RPI 400 has small arrow keys. That's true. Um, let me show you my current keyboard. Um, this is my current keyboard. <laughs> um, so yeah, Th this is like more keys. Oh shit, those arrows are small. Damn. RSI keyboard. It's actually pretty good. Um, I like the thumb keys. Leopold FC750. Um, that's pretty much the same as my Magistouch too, I think, except it looks cooler. Um, that's pretty cool. That's the coolest keyboard I can think about. This is like, this is peak keyboard. This is, this is where keyboards should have stayed. Um, unfortunately I've done some horrible surgery on my Magistouch 2 and I need to solder some stuff on it to fix it. Um, and don't be like me. Don't do experiments on your keyboards. Um, mwave.com.au 200 dollars, no, it's okay. Can you still buy the Magistouch? $200 now, exactly. Cherry red? Cherry red. Um, but yeah, this is the one I have. I think I still have the box for it around. Oh, I'm seeing some keyboards I immediately don't like. Um, don't know what this is. That looks upsetting. Yeah, the, it's a chiclet keyboard. Um, magnetic keyboard, I don't know if I like this. That doesn't look nice. 
Um, and the other thing I just have is a trackball. I have this. This is my. This is what I use for my input. Um, I don't use the armrest though because that like gives me cramps. Oh, uh, it's so good. Shitty for games, but like, um, I can just move my mouse around using my fingers, using my arm. No fine muscle skills. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, I don't know, that keyboard looks kind of, something that I don't quite get about the Raspberry Pi 400 is that all the places, um, you can buy it, it's like, um, Australian keyboard layout, like what? What's the difference? Like it's got a, I think they just put that in the title, right? Like we can't just put US keyboard layout. It has to be Australian. Like it's upside down. <laughs> uh, okay, Australian layout. Um, what's the difference here? Um, Raspberry Pi 400 US keyboard layout. I don't think you should be able to call it Australian layout if it's just generic Australian. A generic American, like if it's US ANSI. Um, layout. Yeah, so there's no like AU layout. What's this image called anyway? Australian layout. Let's try and figure this out. Wait, what the hell? They've replaced the scroll lock with the PAL button. That's evil. Why would you do that? I don't understand. <laughs> Why would you replace the scroll lock with the PAL button? Now people are going to be trying to put on scroll lock and turning their machines off. It's fine. Wait, is this the UK layout? Yeah. So Australian layout is just the UK layout, I think. Yeah, let's just try and resize it and then we can do a quick back and forth. No. No, it's not. So that's the UK layout. And so we've got the US style, but we have a power button there. Is that for real? Is that real? Is that just a, like a, a, oh my God. They've actually put a power button there. Why? Raspberry Pi Australia layout. What's happened? Why would you do this? <laughs> I'm like, I'm freaking out a little bit too much. Why are you giving all these people cursed keyboard layouts? UK layout. NO layout. There's no Australian layout. Is this unofficial? What's happening here? Why can't I find it anywhere? Keyboard mouse. All right, what if we go into like the folder? Is it just gonna flow for me? No, of course it doesn't exist. What if we do like AU layout? No. I'm, uh, 
I'm getting too fixated on this, I know, but I don't know. It's got even pictures too, like, is this a prank? Am I being pranked? I don't know. I'm scared. Okay. All right, that's enough, that's enough. We have to get back to the code. We have to fix this clobbering. At least I think it's clobbering. We have, let's print F nice and it clobbers CXBP CXAX. So this shouldn't have any like clobbering. So this isn't the problem. It does what it does. So log general, create timestamp, that's fine. Uh, log incoming returns nothing. Oh, so this should actually be preserving CX. I get you. I also get that. Um, I need to put things in a separate, in like the reverse order. I think I made that mistake on stream first, um, where I just like popped everything in the same order I pushed it. All right, so that is kind of better, maybe. Um, actually, no, that's not better at all. Something, <laughs> something is wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That makes sense. Um, see, you just specify each tab in the spaces, right? And you just, you can't use a mathematical formula for that or anything. You just specify each of them. That's fine. Lisp is, oh shit. I don't call SNPrintf there. I still don't understand Vim's tab stuff. Um, oh shit, it works. Um, we did it, Reddit. What do you mean what in God's name is Lisp? Do you like programming languages? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wiki how, all right, do you like teeth? Um, but yeah, Lisp is a cool language and it's written using parentheses. Um, do you like that? Do you like all these parentheses? Is that nice? Look at that. Look at this. This is great. This is fine. Um, yeah, like that. That's fine there. All of this is fine. All right, so we have um, printing working. We have SN printf working. Um, so we also just have to log to file. Um, so write std out. Let's change that to write std out, write log, um, and print space. Uh, print space should be, uh, well, write std out, write log, uh, print space, write space. That's kind of weird. We should also not just duplicate this junk. Like, um, write space should just call write log. Um, Like we push, we push 20. Um, we move AX B 
and we push AX and we push CX. Then pop CX and we pop AX. Then we return. Um, but before we do that, we call write log. There, that should be fine. It's not fine apparently. Because I did the, ma the same mistake from as before. Uh, uh, will you forget programming and become a farmer with you during the apocalypse? I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'm in too deep. All right, so that's good. Um, right space. Clobber's nothing. That's fine, that's fine. What the hell is happening here? AXSI, move SBBP. Why am I using a base pointer there? I don't need base pointers, not anymore. This is probably fine. Base point is adjust for when you're being smart. But I'm not being smart. Oh dear, what it what is this? Great timestamp. Oh yeah, I do use a base pointer for that because that's that is smart. Um, let's do bot test. All right, of course that um, ruins things, but that's okay. Uh, what you should do is you should always confidently change a whole bunch of code at once. Um, so that way you understand exactly uh, what the problem is. Number sequence four, 124. So yeah, if you use Emacs, I think you have to get aboard the Lisp train. Does that, does that work? Yeah, so I'm gonna just trash these base pointers at the moment. Um, some may hate me for this. Some may praise me for this. Um, but you know, what can you do? I have to, I have to get cycles somewhere. Cycles don't grow on trees. You know, if I'm not using my base pointer, then, um, although apparently that doesn't want to work properly. It's weird. Throw out the list for some sweet apple crisps. That's nice. Right, so log incoming is once again, not working. So <clears throat> we do push BP there, move BP SP. Then we move SP BP and then we pop BP. That looks wrong. I don't know about that. I don't know if I got that right. Evidently, I'm not getting it right either way. Um, because my stack is probably unbalanced and this is saving me from fixing that. Oh crap, yeah, all right. I do have to use it there because I'm pushing stuff all over the stack. That's fine, I guess feels bad. Um, yep, uh, and I think I had like a pop CX followed by a push CX.
Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on architectures like ARM or modern x86, instead of like pushing everything to the stack for your intermediates, you would use the um, call these save registers. All right, so now let's um, write a log. We're going to write the log to uh, STD out. I guess we should also write it to STD error as well as a prank. Okay, that prank didn't really work. If you knew what you knew now know, would you have started DOSBot? No. What just happened there? Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, so now we just need to figure out what file handle we need to write to for our log. Um, so, write to file or device using handle. So how do we open file using handle? And do we have long file names? Um, DOS LFN APA. <coughs> um, do we even have the APIs in here? Um, LFN. All right, uh, LFN make directory. So how do we open a file? Oh yes, there's a different mode for each file type, don't you know? Um, set Q default Python indent offset. That's fine. That's all good. Um, what the fuck am I looking at here? So let's just test if DOSBox supports long file names. So, um, edit. Um, file new test file save as hello world dot t. Okay, so the editor does not. Um, echo hi to hello world dot txt. And did that truncate it? Yes. So I think we should just be in spirit here and we're just going to have to, I don't know, how would we make a log file name? Um, we would have to rotate the log, no? Um, so, I don't know. Um, you know what? I think the rotation should probably be done by a batch file, right? Um, so let's do bot log. Did I just delete too much? All right. Um, so we're going to have to allow it to, should I hard code the name? Because I don't want to walk through the environment block. You know what, let's just, we need it in C anyway. So let's do, um, if not open log, oh, sorry. If open log, um, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Um, printf, unable to open log. Return one. There we go. Um, that's a big spaghetti -o situation. Um, so get environment details. So 
um, open log. You know, we don't actually need this log printf thing. Let's fix that in a second. Um, we can just define it in assembly like we did before. Um, what's open log? Okay, so um, character name equals get event bot log, bot log file. I'll just do bot log. And then we will error if there's no file, if there's no name, we'll return one. And open to open log and let's just, um, we should probably be setting the return codes here, right? So we can fix this. There we go. It's fine. Um, then we return zero. Um, and we're going to have to decide on what file descriptor this is gonna be. Um, let's just test this first. No, no, we get so many errors. Column expression is not meaningful. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not meaningful? That means something. What are you talking about? It's not expecting return value. I wrote return. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I see it. I see my bad. That makes sense. Um, edit. <laughs> It's called getting angry at your computer and then realizing it's correct. Um, set bot log equals um, test log. I'll do bot test. Um, set old log equals bot log. Set old bot log equals old log and set old log equals that. That's fine, that should be fine. Um, and let's also dump this log printf. Um, let's replace that with, uh, what did we call it in this with the SN printf? Log general. Shit, I'm already not wanting to do this. So yeah, we do SN printf, then we log. You did it and it only took five hours probably. Um, So this is going to be global log printf. Oh, nice. How easy. Um, would you like to rev like review? Yeah, let's just return. We need bigger Twitch limits. Yeah. Um, so log printf, log printf. Um, so how did we do it here? All right, log printf. Um, this is just basically going to be a call. Shit. Fuck. Um, wait, no, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. It's fine. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to have to call log general after we do SN printf nice. So we have to call SN printf nice. Uh, move a, a uh, sorry, we have to pop AX. No, pop BP push BP. Ah, uh, shit. B, uh, BX push BX. Okay. Do I want to be an old man with four dogs out in the range in Texas? Not really. That actually kind of sounds like a personal hell of mine. Okay, now we're in trouble here because um, this is really not going to work. This is fine though. Um, log printf, this is fine. Um, because we will just have to solve this problem somehow. Um, so let's do that. Int log printf extern c. And then we do log printf. Yes, log printf. Um, and this is gonna crash hard unless I figure out how to fix this. Um, SN printf nice is not defined. Do you know what's not defined? Um, SN printf nice apparently. All right, so we have a little bit of a Zalgo situation. Um, and the problem here is that, uh, oh, ah, ah. Um, we want to call SN printf nice, but we also need to get the return address off the stack and put it somewhere. Where do we put it? Um, where it goes it's not gonna fit um hmm i mean we could just we could just um do you need more storage uh, we could just put, um, uh, printf, uh, printf return, and then we would pop BX, uh, move BX, wait, printf return, I think that would, that would work, and then we restore it here. Is that fine? The proofs in the pudding. Yeah, it sounds like something I would say. And it tastes like pie. What? Oh dear. Uh, I think I might have flown too close to the sun, if you ask me. Uh. Move printf return. Move printf return. What am I doing here? Am I, should I be putting the literal there? Yeah, that's not right. So I can't just store the return address there or BX there. Oh, BX, push BX.
Um, what? Oh, hang on a second. We can do pop AX, move AX there. And then we call that and that's nice. And then we, um, I guess we jump to printf return. That's fine. Banana cream pie. What's that made out of? Uh, I'm going to double down on this actually. Um, here we're going to jump SN printf return. If only there was like some kind of scratch area that I could use. What is happening to my life? How did it get this in this situation? Pop AX. Correct. Move, store that in printf return. Correct. Move AX. Okay, we're going to need to open a debugger for this. Um, um, hang on a second. Um, um, set bot host equals 10.0.2.26666. Set bot log equals bot test dot log and WD bot. Let's go to um, I think it would be in log All right, so that's dangerously accessible. That's fine. Um, so let's look at our stack. So what have we put here on our stack? We put um, the return address, which is 4174. And we've put in a whole bunch of other junk. Um, Unlocked better ad payouts. I don't even run ads. I'm a leech on Twitch. Yeah, always doing is none check. Um, so we need to return to four one seven four. So can we? Can we? Can we look? It's four one seven four. Wait a minute. Let's go back to the bot module. Tabletop ARG. So what would the first printf be? It would m most likely be, um, showing us what the host is, right? So here, so where is this? 4158. So we want to return to 4158 and we jump to 4193. So let's, oh shit, I did it wrong. 
All right, let's try running again. Let's try running again. Wait, wait, file, exit. I mean, it doesn't look like it's ruined everything. So let's hit down at over here. Very good narration today. Um, let's run to the cursor. Um, window um, assembly. Um, let's step into F8. So we push some host details and then we call log print F. So if we look at the stack, we currently have one def A022, um, one A or A. So I think A is 10.0.2.2 and one of them is one def is probably the port. No, one AOA is probably the port or something. Who knows? It's unclear. Um, so let's go next. So we've made a call. We have 4174 on the stack. So we move that to printf return. Um, let's see what we have. Printf return. Printf return. All right. Um, 331A EX. So um, address 331E. Oh, that edits it. Okay, data. We want to view memory at two three three zero um three three one e which is zero then if we step past it sets seven four whatever all right it works fine all right so now let's focus on the stack some more um what do we have on the stack here uh we have three four three f four c on the stack, was that there before? Window, CPU registers, the stack pointer is at, oh, that's just showing the pointer. All right, so that should be fine. So then we do run, we step over this and we see what it's done to the stack. Nothing. Um, So CX has zero as the result. God damn it. I see the issue. Um, we need to also push um, a log buffer lane and then log buffer. Otherwise it's not, not an SN printf call, is it then? All right, that's, that's closer. That's closer. Um, it, not fully what I would want. Um, it's not ideal. Um, so let's just see if it's my printf return stuff that's breaking stuff here. So pop dx. 
um, push dx and let's return. So this should mangle some stuff probably. That's the same result. All right, cool. So, um, fuck. Oh, that's because I'm clobbering shit. I've been so careful too. Um, push CX. I think it's that's what we're clobbering, and we're gonna pop CX. I think that's kind of closer. Like SN printf nice. Um, AX and CX log general. What does that do? SI. Okay. Move SI AX. Also, thanks for the follow, Catfo. Now you can know whenever I'm streaming. Forever and ever. Your mum put a home phone in the basement office. Is that a. Is that Chad energy? I don't remember Terry Davis getting angry at people um, because I haven't watched his videos, I suppose. Uh, call SF printf nice. Oh, but, oh shit. We've got to push CX and SI as well. Oh no. Where are we going to push it? Wait, no, I think that should be fine there. I don't think I'm clobbering anything there. That should be fine. It seems fine almost. But not quite. Uh, we should also, shit, yeah, log printf. Why is this frozen now? Send new buffer, that seems frozen. Okay, so what you're saying is I should watch that on stream real quick? Nah, I'm just kidding. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Sponge juke, goat jukes. <coughs> uh, both of those are horrible. So we do send new buffer there. It says sent packet, length 56, and then it freezes. What if we log, what if we call log general twice? That, does that help? Okay, so it is actually able to write that. So I'm guessing it's not jumping back to printf return. Is this because it's a far call? Hmm, I don't think so. <clears throat> but it should jump back, so 
Um, we are doing AX, of course. Um, log buffer length, log buffer. Then we call S and printf nice. Then, oh, that, that does clobber CX. Oh dear. All right, hang on. Uh, we'll have to move that back then. Let's see if this works. This is... What if you had to program using smells? I don't like that. Hey, if it's ARM, then it's Chrome OS, right? Right? I don't want your frigging ads Twitch now that I've got a hundred followers. All right. So we, we try to preserve CX. Um, we try and save SI. Just elst it. It's fine. Who cares? No one reads this anyway. I'll get cream. Happy a thousand followers. I'll get cream pie tonight. Okay. Oh, geez. No, bro. Something's wrong with this. Probably because I put the wrong register there. That could explain it. This is turning into nightmare code. Um, it's fine though. It's fine. All right, time to use the debugger. Using else clauses is just bad. Why would you use else when you can just do an if and then return immediately? <laughs> Um, uh, how can you use an else clause badly? Do you want to do two if clauses with the same conditional? Like what? Um, I put my heater on real quick, so I don't know if you can hear that. It might be picking up. Um, actually I'll turn it off because I know it's going to pick up. Else chains are returning late are bad and switches exist. I mean, not wrong. Um, no, it's okay. You can't. Don't use else if you don't realize you'll catch a case you didn't expect. That kind of makes sense. But also... I haven't had any trouble with else statements before in my programming career. I don't know if I'm built differently than most people, but uh, I can't say I've ever had an issue with else statements. Let's just set the debugger here. Um, can we just do debug? All right, now let's try setting debug to WD. You find it unfortunately true. What? That's pretty cool. Um, what the hell's happened here? Why are we in a loop of int three?
Too many coders and not enough programmers. What's that mean? What happens here? All right, log print F assembly starting. All right, let's just trace through this in assembly. Um, F8, um, sorry, data stack. Call near point F. Okay. AX, we added the stack pointer, of course. I feel like there's a bit of gatekeeping there, but I'm not sure. I'm afraid of C. I'm writing assembly because I'm afraid of C. Does that help? Um, Wait, that sets ES? What did I prove your point with? I set CX to zero. I set SI back to the correct value. And we return to the value at 331E. And that works, kind of. A coder wouldn't. Oh dear. Okay, I'm definitely gonna put my heater on and I'm sorry, I removed the noise gate um, from OBS simply because it cuts off like uh, my voice and it sounds really weird. So I'm really sorry in advance, everyone. I mean, I could put the noise gate on now, couldn't I? You can't hear shit, so shit, hang on. Let me just turn on the stream and see if I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, I just heard it just now. Yeah, I can hear that. All right, let's put the noise gate on because that's gonna bother me for the rest of my life. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, okay, that's much better. I'm sorry, everyone. I couldn't, I couldn't do the noise. Um, they probably know more about bitpacking than the dude that can intuit C style and HTML style. I don't have to refresh the page. I use the developer console, the inspector. But I kind of get the point. Um, what the fuck has happened here? Actually, this shouldn't fail at all. What the hell? Oh, it crashed DOSBox. I know what you mean. Kind of. Um, what the fuck is happening here? Dunk your head in tea? I don't know, this is confusing me. I feel confused and afraid, and I thought I knew what I was doing, but I don't. And I feel like a coward and a fool. And I don't know what to do at this point. It could just be that it's, it's time for me to die perhaps perhaps this is the end of my stream um SICX all right all right all right 
Let's print F nice. No, we're gonna figure this out. I've I've figured out worse things. Gilmore Radio. Who's Gilmore? Radio.tspigot.net. Is that the the Gilmore guy from the, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Are they gonna tell me Hitler shit? Uh, oh, you don't need to exit, you can just, oh, you can just exit, I mean, or, I don't know, um, op SI, so I'm actually being really small brained here so we're just gonna have to sit back and debug this set debug equals um wd um and so we're just gonna have to step through this and it's gonna suck and i'm sorry everyone um space 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 now, obviously, that didn't actually work, did it? Um, which is not good. Um, it's not good at all, actually. It's fucking wrong. Oh, sorry, my bad. Um, I was... Wait, is that what I did wrong? Move, um, S-I-A-X. Is that part of it? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Can I make DOS beep again? I'm not gonna, it probably would beep if I turn the audio on, but I don't want that. You understand? All right, so we're in, a, we, we have hit, we have hit problem. We have hit places we have not supposed to be in. Um, is our code segment the same? Yeah, so our instruction pointer is at one. We're at zero. I guess that's cool. I guess someone's put zero here at the start of my code segment. Um, so that if I do a null pointer dereference and jump to it, um, then I would get here. Uh, anyway, let's check the stack. Let's check the calls. Send reset packet. What? Send reset packet. Hang on. What? What? Uh, 1F93. Um... No, I don't want that. What did I just do? Oh, shit. Um, I'm oh, just kidding. It's fine. Uh, seven, control F4. Okay, so data stack. All right, so one F93. Um, let's see if we can see the assembly of that. No, that's not mine. So... Is there an assembly for that? No. I don't know what I'm looking for entirely. There's some nulls and stuff over here. Um, let's check out our modules um, and see what's in the, I guess, logic thing. Does this have the address? Um, 4583. So we're around the 45 error. So this looks like a place that. No. No, this is not the place. It was close.
Gardening? What is that? For nerds? Uh ha ha ha. My garden is dying. I need help. Alright, so because I can't figure out where my shit is in the coal stack, what pseudo gender would you be? I don't know. Why are you trying to mind flood me with all this, all this stuff? All right, so one nine four at one. All right, send reset packet. What is happening here? IP near pointer IP P checksum. What? IPP checksum. Um, data locals, data globals, IPP. Oh shit. D just ignore that I said that. Near pointer underscore IP underscore P. See, I'm saying, I'm not saying what I said, but I'm just saying IP packet checksum. Um, can you disassemble that? The hell does upper mean? I would, oh, thanks. What the hell does inside mean? Uh, what? Oh. Uh, what is this? Tell me what this is. <gasps> it worked. So it called IP packet checksum. Something is happening and it's really bad here. So we're going to do the tried and true method of um, returning. Um, and just see if that fixes everything. Just to rule out what's happening. Actually, I don't want to debug. I just want to bug. Uh-oh. I have a feeling I know what's happening. Maybe? Maybe. I don't want to. But I feel like... Wait, that's frozen? Why is that frozen? Am I hitting the same bug? All right, so it's not that? All right. I'm at an oldest change. So let's just define log printf um, x as nothing. Uh, okay, bot test. Shit, it's been four hours. Ah, uh, what's happening to me? Shit. Uh, okay, we're running like an extra thirty minutes over time then. Um, define log printf. So something has gone wrong. And so 
something has gone very wrong. You know what? Let's just let's just redefine that as jump printf. That'll be fine. Printf is not defined. This is fine. It's actually not fun. This is not fun at all. Okay, that works. That works. Of course it works. So what is printf doing? Printf is doing something weird. I don't know what the fuck's happening. I flew too close to the sun, I guess. Wait a minute. Does printf return the value on the stack? Mm. No, no, it doesn't. Hmm. Hmm. Burn a little wax to find what's, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's not real. Why did I just comment out all my code? Um, are we supposed to be consuming the arguments? Because when I jump to printf, it works fine. But when I don't jump to printf, what if I just start? I don't know, it can't possibly. How's that? How does that work? Does printf not do what I think it does? It shouldn't have to do what I think it does. I have like, um, I have a veridic thing over here as well. Um, SN printf nice. Um, the only difference is that this is called from C code. Um, and printf is C code. So am I failing with a calling convention thing? Oh no. Um, op AX, move printf return, call printf, jump printf return. It's not passing shit in its registers, is it? Like this should work. All right, so that works. So printf works, so what if instead we add the log buffer and the log buffer length, and then we call sn printf. Does that crash? It shouldn't. But it does. So something is incorrect. Could I possibly have the length and the buffer around wrong? Or. Hmm. I put a splinter in my foot. Rip and piece me. That's okay. I'll just probably get infected and die. Uh, uh. So this fails. Curious. So why does this fail? Hmm.
Do we perhaps need to pop something off the stack here? Perhaps we need to go back to the debugger. All right, that's not exactly what I want. So sprintf takes the string, the size and the format. We have log buffer, we have the length, and we also have on the rest of the stack, the format and all the other stuff. So this should work, and yet it does not work. Curious. So. Let's do some debugging. Um, let's see what Whatcom is actually doing. All right. Set up socket. Um, let's see the assembly for this. How does it do this? So it moves a string, then it pushes the string. So that would be the format. And then it calls log printf. And that works fine. Except no, it doesn't. What the fuck? Sorry, I don't want to use sour language on stream. Um, I've been trying to keep my string streams PG friendly, uh, but sometimes the computer, it just brings out some of the rage. Not very Christian of me, I'm sorry. All right, so we call. <laughs> uh, what would Jesus want? I know it as the 18 plus flag. I'm being really, uh, what's the word? Uh, tongue in cheek. Um, so we call near pointer log print F and that traces in to that, that pops it. And uh, uh, we, we pop it, then we move it, then we twist it, and we call printf. And so now we have to look very carefully at the result of the stack. So right now, the top value is 311e, and it is still 311e. Why is it 311E? It shouldn't be 311E. Why is it jumping to 311E? Bro, mate. This ain't cool. This ain't cash money. Why does it say 311E? I need someone to explain this to me, please. Um, going all American, becoming an American. Oh, I want my American citizenship, please. I'm having a feeling that I'm jumping wrong here. forced Americanization. Ah, uh, sounds kind of racist if you ask me. A really lightweight video editor for the Raspberry Pi. Not sure. I think rendering would probably uh, hurt. So wait, we move, we move AX, the 331E, but the log buffer is also at 331E. What? What? 
Oh no, it's at 311E. Stripping audio. Uh, so 331E. Yeah, that should be correct. So then we jump there and we get back to main and then we add two to the stack. But 311E is is still on the stack, isn't it? No, that looks fine. That looks absolutely fine. What's the problem, bro? Did we hit stack overflow? No, no, that's not it. So we send buffer. We call send new buffer. What's the application look like? Uh, it hasn't printed anything on the screen. But it should have written to log buffer. All right, let's just continue stepping through this. All right, let's step into this now because this calls it with an argument. So we're at stack location 3F4C. Um, so let's window check the assembly. Um, we push CX, which is the length. We move the format string. Uh, space, space, space. Then we step over it and it should be... No, that actually kills us. What? Why? Um, break. I think it's break log printf. Um, let's go. Go again. And let's see what happens here. Data stack. Printf return. Push the log buffer length. Oh. Oh, I see. I I've added stuff to the stack, but I've been a greedy a greedy person and I th I think that's the case. See, I'm adding those two things to the stack. So let's see. Will this finally work now that I've found my, my error, maybe? Um, no, but it doesn't crash. Let's swap those around maybe. Still doesn't crash, but that's pretty good. So CX SI. X SI print return, print F return, AX. Try putting the SP up for there. 
Maybe I need to put it up higher. Like eight or is for the magic number here because I added two elements and two times that's four bytes. Yeah, so we add four. What if we subtract just for giggles, I guess. Oh shit, of course it's not working. Um, I'm not calling my SN printf nice function. Um, then we add SP and that should log it. <gasps> my God, it seems to work. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. Um, so push. Yeah, I guess we'll just do that then. Um, I mean, that is some pretty terrible code. I'm not going to lie, but it works. Um, so that also means, um, printf return not found returned. So that, that's a little bit nasty. Fist fight on snake case versus camel case. I use snake case in Python and uh, I like camel case more um, simply because it reads a bit better with screen readers. Um, okay, so we need to open a file using a handle. Pointer to ASCII Z file name. How does it enforce it? Does it like not have underscores in, in names? Okay, so we get a file handle back. Um, should we should we end the stream now or should we really just try and get a lot of this logging done let me check the to do i think we're pretty close to it um yeah we should probably just finish this um this can be the logging stream we weren't worried about the lfn um Let's go to bot.cpp, um, extend printf. You know, we can just open the log ourselves, right? Um, extend log, log open file. Uh, I'm not touching VS code, but I, I get you. Um, so we're going to do, I, I think I'll just create a file handle using this. Um, so how do you open a file handle in Whatcom? Oh, camel. Um, so let's go to docs. Clip. All right. Um, so, how do we do open file using a handle? So, is it open? It 
So this isn't using the file handle equals open. All right, is this it? So this should give us a handle for DOS. All right, so we need what header for this? All these shitty Unix headers, whatever. Fuck it, who cares? Just put them up there. Put them up there. Um. <laughs> oh boy. Probably also put that ASM run thing there too. Um, okay, so we're going to do um, int handle equals open name um, access. Um, I guess we're going to do o append, right? That would make sense. And if you want to rotate the logs, you can just do it in a script. Um, and we're going to do O create as well. O underscore create. Um, binary. Um, text. Um, we need to set the permissions to, do we need to set the permissions? Uh, all, all files are readable with DOS. So we need to set, um, uh, read, write, execute, search. What does this mean? IR user. Read, write, execute, search. All right. All right, we'll just do this. I've never had to use that in my life, but I guess, I guess this is a new day for me. Um, so we have the handle. Um, and what, what happens if the handle is. All right, so if handle equals negative one, um, do we have any, uh, log printf? Let's just do, oh, so that's why they didn't put a return code there. Oh, fuck it. I'll put it there anyway. Um, if handle equals negative one, open log, um, Open failed. This is a regular printf. Uh, open failed. RC1. Open log. No bot log environment variable. Also put a to do there to do. Uh, we should be able to clean up anyway. Um, even if it's not fully done. Yeah. So open RC failed and then we put the handle there. That seems fine. Um, otherwise we're going to do log open uh, log set um, set handle handle. Um, handle. 
but let's just comment that out for now. And then we're going to do handle is I. And then we'll also have a log get a handle. Or maybe I should be defining these. Not too sure. Um, actually, int um, log handle. There we go. That's a global variable. Everyone can share it now. Um, and we can just do log handle equals that. Log handle. Log handle equals I. And then um, at the end of the day, we will close the log. Close log. Close log handle. Commie variables. <laughs> Close log. There we go. So um, that should be fine. And let's see what happens. Handle has not been declared. Handle has not been declared. Are you kidding me? Can I not like type properly? Do I not know how to use a computer? Simple close has not been declared. Are you sure about that? Are you very sure about that? That seems sus. Um, close. Okay, just show me the close. The close. Show me the close. Uh, page one, three, four. Come on, close. DOS, wait, there's DOS close and DOS open. DOS create, DOS open. Hang on, let's see. Let's see what these are. DOS, um, right. I need to use these instead. So there's DOS create new and there's DOS create. And that uses 3C. So let's try 3C. Create file using a handle. Open file. Um, DOS open append. So we have DOS create and DOS close. So we probably want to use those instead, right? So DOS create, um, then we want to do, is there a DOS open? Hang 
and then there's a dust close. Do you have to seek to the end of the file? Um, should we be doing all this instead of this POSIX stuff? I have a feeling like we probably should. Um, so what headers are we using for that? Um, DOS, FC, and TL. So mode is um, write only. So we're going to do DOS open, which uses 3D. Um, this has interrupt services, DOS services. Okay. So we have create file using a handle. What does that mean? Um, what does that mean compared to open file using handle? A file already exists, it's truncated. Let's just do this. Um, that way we will always have the log and that's fine. So DOS, we're looking for 3C. Um, DOS create. Create new. Yep. Okay. So three C is DOS create. And three D is Create a new file using FCB. Is that, I guess, probably not what we want. So what's the difference between create and create new? Three C and what's create new? Five B. So why would you want 5B versus 3C? DOS int 5B. Oh, so this opens it. Um, if it already exists, then it will fail. Um, okay, so DOS open append. I have to use seek. Append. End. Rename file 
create temporary file, create a new file. Um, what's right say? So I don't think we can seek DOS seek to end of file. Set current file position. So we would want to get the file size. So that's 42. Move file pointer using handle. That's a bit strange. Oh, so we can seek end. All right. So we probably want um, create new, otherwise open. Um, and then seek to the end. And then we would want to um, just write to stuff. So I'm way too tired to do this at the moment, but let me write this down. Um, so it may basically be um, file log handle equals, um, we'll try open dots open file um, name, blah, 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 blah. If not, if failed, create file, uh, log handle, equal dos create new. Um, probably, um, do we have dos seek? DOS seek. Where's my DOS files at? DOS open. Well, these are just the elephant aware ones. Okay, DOS. Set F time, set file pause. Why am I bothering with this shit? I should just write it in assembly. What the hell? Um, yeah, I'll just write it in assembly next time. Um, okay, that's all. That's all for this stream. It's been way too long. Um, see you all later.